Hi, this is Matt from Preferati, and today we're going to talk about questioning strategies. It's important to develop great questioning strategies in order to clarify understanding and make sure you really understand what's going on before you act. Or, as Franklin Covey said, seek first to understand before being understood. All right, so uh, something that I first heard in um, Sandler sales training is the concept, uh, the uh, problem that uh, the patient brings the psychologist is never the real problem. You know, the patient comes to the psychologist, the therapist, and they say, I'm not sleeping well, or I'm, I'm fighting with my wife, or, you know, uh, whatever it is. And, of course, that's not the real problem, right? There's, there's, there's something deeper going on. Um, and it's the psychologist's job, really, to get to the bottom of that, what's, what's really going on, you know? And, and so if they're a, uh, a, a money-minded psychologist, they'll take a real long time to figure out what's going on, you know, uh, do a lot of, lot of work with this person. All right, so the first problem the patient brings the psychologist is never the real problem. And just as frequently, your clients, your customers, your sales prospects, even your coworkers, the first problem they bring you is probably not the real problem. You're going to have to dig in deeper. So why is this? Why do people not come to you with completely thought through, well-formulated uh, questions and problems and so forth? Well, you know, they're, they're not lying. They're just, uh, they don't have the time. They haven't really thought things through. They haven't really gotten to the end of it. Or they might be just pressed for time. They have a pretty good idea of what's going on, but they didn't have time to articulate that in an email or meeting or whatever. So you're dealing with less than all the information. You've got to move forward. So it's so important for us to uh, seek to understand before we seek to be understood. So we need to learn more before we dry, try to draw any conclusions or take any actions. The more complex or painful the issue, the more we need to learn. So we have to get good at asking questions. And most people are kind of intimidated by asking questions. Um, asking questions is just drilling more into what they're saying, just, just detecting more about what's going on. Um, so I like to think about it like Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia will have an article on a topic, and there's all these links in the article, right? There's, there's links to every time the article talks about something else, there's a link. You can click that link and dig deeper and learn about that thing that they referenced in the article. And that's what you're doing here when you're talking to someone. You, you, they said something, and you're going to click on that link and say, tell me more about that. Really? What's, what's, what about, why are you seeing that? How, how long have you been seeing that? What have you done about it? Uh, why do you think that is? So you're, you're digging into specific things that they said and learning more and just building up your own understanding, your own mental picture of what's really going on. Uh, so you need to dig and dig. And uh, then you want to summarize your understanding and repeat it back to the person you're talking to. This is critical, critical work to do. Um, this is something that I, I do frequently. If I get a new email or a new TD or something like that, I read it. My first question is, do I really understand what's going on here? Do I really understand the background behind all of this? Do I understand everything before I take action? Because if I take action with the wrong picture in my mind, how likely is it that the action I take is going to be the right action? It's pretty low. Things are probably going to get more confusing and worse. <clears throat> so we need to dig in. Now, if this is important for me, a native English speaker, a native U.S. culture person, working with other native English speakers in the U.S., how much more important is it if you don't speak English natively or if the U.S. culture is not your native culture? So much more important even because there's so much more opportunity for misunderstanding to happen. It's no one's fault, but, it, but, but we do need to get to the bottom of communication. We do need to take time and make sure we understand what's going on. All right, so we, we need to be confirming uh, our understanding. We need to always be checking our understanding. We want to be checking our understanding with our coworkers, with our clients, with our sales prospects. Any communication we get, the first question is, do I understand? Do I understand deeply? Do I really understand what's going on here so that I can respond appropriately? Um, but doing this takes practice. You need to get good at it. Um, it's, it's, and it's different whether you're doing it over email or in person in a meeting like this or what have you. And it's probably a little different whether you're doing it cross-culturally or within your own culture. Um, so I'd like to take some time now to practice this. I'd like to essentially do some role play and dig in. So I'm planning on moving this summer to Oregon on my own, which will be the first time for me. And with my scenario, I'm having a hard time finding a roommate or cheap enough housing for me to live on my own. The first thing I would ask is how important to you it is to 
to stick to that plan? I mean, how how flexible are you to to change this uh, time or deadline where you want to move? Um, it's pretty unflexible because my lease for this apartment is over June 30th, and officially I'm going back around June 2nd. So I have to find housing. My grandparents are going to let me stay with them until I find a different place to like stay long term. So that's very nice of them, but that is a short term <laughs> thing that is flexible. But um, me getting my own housing or roommate is pretty unflexible. Okay, just let me think. I think I've been in, in that situation before, um, living here in Argentina. So so yeah, I think you, you should have a plan with all, all the things you need to move, uh, to start researching um, about the, the options you have, uh, which one would suit better your needs. Um, so let me let me uh, let me jump in a little bit here. <laughs> so first of all, so first of all, no, this is this is great. This is great. We want to work through this. So first of all, it's excellent that you relate to the situation and you say, okay, here's here's what that looks like in my world. But you know that's dangerous territory, right? Because an apartment in Argentina and an apartment in Portland are two very different concepts. I'm pretty sure in terms of sure. how they're leased, lease terms, roommates, legality, things like that. We have this tendency as humans to click into the nearest of our familiar models whenever we run into a situation. And that's a little bit of what we want to train ourselves not to do so much with client emails and client situations. We want to realize, I probably don't have the best idea of what's going on here because I come from a very different background. So I want to understand better. So your goal for now, Emily, is not at all to give her advice, but to keep asking questions so you understand and get to the bottom of the real issue and then keep restating, restate back to her what you understand until she agrees with you and says, yes, yes, that's the situation. Only at that point would you then start asking questions that are closer to advice. You're asking questions that are advice. You're asking questions that, that guide her towards coming up with her own solution. Because if Anna's your client, she has to come up with the solutions and then she can hire you to execute them, possibly, uh, if we come back to our world. So um, <clears throat> it is very good that you're connecting this to what's familiar to you, but you want to test that by asking more questions and checking in with her and finding out, okay, where is she really stuck? What's really going on here? Um, so I think that, I, that I've started, I started uh, well with my first question, you know, how, how seriously are you taking this? Is, is there something that is bugging you besides the point that you have to stay more time with your grandparents and not moving in this time frame? They're nice people, but I do want <laughs> my own space. Um, the thing that bothers me most is because I have planned a lot for this. I've done a whole bunch of research. So I'm like completely prepped for the move. I'm going to get my stuff there and I'm going to get it in the storage unit. That's completely fine. I'm not worried about that. My biggest worry is finding the right roommate from long distance. I'm in a different state right now. And during my hunt so far, I found that all of the room, like no one my age is asking for a roommate or moving out on their own right now. Everyone I like looked up or search or any search results have been people who are a lot older than me. So that's one of my biggest worries, finding a roommate that would be fitting for me. And then find it or if I need to find my own apartment if that's not an option uh, it's very expensive in Portland even not in the like downtown city area it's expensive even on the suburbs so my biggest issues right now are finding either a cheaper apartment in a safe area because I'm gonna be by myself or finding a roommate that get along with me or even want someone like of my age to move in with them what what you are saying is that you can find enough people to to help you pay this rent, um, and also the other issue is that you don't find um, cheaper apartments uh, for you to rent on your own. So is is um, is it possible that you maybe I don't know um, I, th I I don't think this is the ideal, but maybe like for some time um to ask someone who you trust to lend you some money to pay this and you will pay them back later um 
while, while you take more time finding this other person who can, you know, um, pay yeah. the rent with you? Well, I, I have enough money in my budget. I just would not prefer to spend that much money on housing. I'm kind of uh, picky on money, so. But um, no, so I do have enough so I can for at least like for my if I pick like a four month lease for an apartment I could do like a more extensive option while I'm finding all their other alternatives of all the things you've told me what is not negotiable not negotiable is having a roommate who would be unsafe or crazy or something and having a rent that is or over even like a third of it I would not want that But I guess, and then, but for negotiables, I would be okay with moving locations. Like I wouldn't have to be in Portland and um, I could have more of an expensive rent, just not crazy expensive. So you are flexible about the location. Mm -hmm. Um, Would it work for you to have like, like other options where you can uh, search for um, different I don't know, near uh, Portland, other zones that you could go and, and search for other options that maybe other people are more open to um, live with you. And also um, you may find cheaper options. Um, have you done that before? Yeah, I've done that some. Uh, it is still expensive but it's a lot more reasonable. So I've been considering that actually more now. My biggest thing is that I'm moving back to Oregon to be back my, by my friends again. So I don't want to move too far from them because that defeats the purpose of moving back to Oregon. All right, let's, let's pause there guys and open it up to um, discussion from the group. Um, something I noticed was that after every response, she was trying to give advice um, instead of, asking like big and deeper um she was trying to like offer solutions to to each of the things that anna was saying yeah i, I would agree with that and it's it's really hard right like like yeah our reaction super is hard. to yeah yeah to come up with the solutions but emily discovered uh that it wasn't about having the money and also discovered that it was about being able to see friends way down in the process after she had made several suggestions it would have been better to know that friends was important and that it wasn't really about having the money it was more about just the principle of how much of my salary is going towards housing that was bothering anna so so um this was this was data that ideally you would have discovered long before you had moved into solution mode And by the way, one of the reasons we want to be so careful about not moving into solution mode with people too fast is for our own thinking. As soon as we start to latch on to a direction and start pushing a particular type of solutions, we actually close down our own minds to other options. We actually stop seeing the entire landscape as soon as we've landed on what the problem is and start driving towards a solution. And it's important that we stay in that sort of open state a little longer, um, essentially. Uh, again, very good job, Emily, but uh, just the note is, yeah, you probably could have done more discovery um, for a while. It always feels like too long, I promise you. It always feels like too long when you're in this discovery phase of the process, and our minds are so quick to latch on to that conclusion. In business, there's never enough time, right? So we're always dancing with, you know, doing this thoroughly and also being expedient and fast, and that's where skill comes in so the more you work with this the better you get at asking the right questions in the right order to save back and forth in time but that's that's a, an advanced skill so, you know don't worry about that now just worry about getting to the truth once you get practiced at getting to and verifying the truth then you can work at speeding it up and once you work at speeding it up you become incredible and a very valuable teammate on any team if you can get to the bottom of the real truth and do it quickly and across cultures, you're, you're, uh, you're, you got it made in the shade, I promise you. So keep working at this. Particularly when people ask a question. Uh, so Javi, um, client says, when will this uh, website be live? What's a question you can answer that question with? 
Um, do you have any event coming up that is important for you to have it ready by a specific date? Mm -hmm. That's that's perfect. And by the way, this works on pricing too, guys. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on pricing. Did you have a budget in mind? You know, find out whatever you can. You're always fishing for data. One great thing about when someone asks you a question is there's you have a little bit of a power advantage right there. Whenever someone asks you a question, you have the right to ask for something in return. So you you know you can you can you can say okay, but I want you to give me a little information too. So yes, I'll tell you when we can get it done, but I also want you to tell me about your world because clients always just say as soon as possible, right? That, you know, like they always want it just as fast as possible. Okay, but if I can find out what's actually going on in your world, oh, you 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 have a conference. Okay, well that's 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 a hard deadline that we have to meet. Whereas it's well, we just want it done. Okay, well, you know, we can we can work around that. So the point is, you want to answer questions with questions, so that you get more information. And when someone asks you a question, you have a little bit more permission to get data than you do in other situations, like when they give you direction or something like that. So you can ask questions with questions, you know, and then immediately do, but do answer their question. So once you ask that question, Javi, and they answer, you then need to, you know, offer some deadline options, for example. So you need to think of yourself like a reporter or a, a criminal investigator or one of these people that's always trying to pick up a little bit of information. You, you never want to let any interaction go to waste. You always want to be building up your mental picture of what's really going on. And so you never let an opportunity to get a little bit of information go to waste. So a uh, common ob objection that I think people might have is, uh, do, will they think you're playing games? Will they think you're being dodgy? My parents told me to mind my business and not ask intrusive questions. And I would say the answer to all of this is not if you are sincerely, sincerely trying to answer the actual questions, are genuinely curious so you can provide them with the most useful answer. So it really matters where you're coming from when you do this. If you're just throwing questions out there to kick the can down the road, if you're just sending emails back so that you don't have to deal with the situation right now, that won't work. But if you look at this question like a reporter or an investigator and you're like, what is, you know, and you're really trying to figure out, you think, I really want to know what's going on here so that I can come up with a solution that's going to work and we'll get out of this back and forth or this recurring issue or this client's situation will be resolved. If you have that genuine, sincere curiosity and you ask from that place, it's usually going to be well received. And for the few clients for whom it's not, you just need to not work with them because people who aren't willing to take the time with you to unpack their own needs aren't great clients in the end. So in other words, don't just go off a script. You can't be that little kid saying, why, 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 why? You have to ask intelligent questions you have to summarize your understanding so they can see what's, uh, where you're at and then give you more information. When you summarize your understanding and send that back to people, um, it, uh, it, it, it causes them to open up. They're like, oh, they've tried really hard, but they don't quite get it. Let me help them to get it. You know, when, when, when you summarize your understanding and it shows that you've really tried and that you've really incorporated all the information, but that that people, and except for like total jerks, people will take the time then to clarify your understanding and give you, fill in the holes in your picture. This information is very useful even if you don't have an opportunity to ask a question. So for example, if you get an email and there's not time to reply, it's still useful for you to at least acknowledge, I probably don't understand everything that's going on here. I probably don't have the total picture. I probably don't know everything that's going on in their head or the other people on their team and what's happening. What they've said is probably not the whole story. The problem the patient brought is not probably the real problem. At least acknowledging this before you move forward, yes, you have to move forward, but at least knowing you don't know, understanding that you don't understand everything causes you to not be so cocky, not be so confident when you move forward. You move forward more cautiously. You you observe the fact, you know, I'm going I'm to make the best decision I can today with the information I've got today, but I'm not going to pretend like I know everything because I haven't had an opportunity to ask questions, summarize my understanding, and get them to clarify and, re and, and respond to my summaries of my understanding until we both agree that I know what's going on. I haven't had that opportunity, so I'm going to assume 
that I should not assume. I'm going to assume that I don't know what's going on here. That's a key takeaway. Even if you don't get to ask the questions, even if you're not comfortable asking the questions, at least recognizing I probably don't have the whole picture it is a very useful exercise here. So as we've seen today, developing strong questioning strategies is key to being able to understand what people mean and to address their real concerns and questions. We have to understand what they mean, and we have to understand what they mean before we answer their questions, which means that we often have to answer questions with questions, and we have to, often have to respond to requests with questions. It's worth it, though, because once you really understand what's going on in their world, you'll be able to, be able to more effectively help them.